Hi, in this video we're going to be looking at how to graph functions using calculus. Now the techniques we're looking at from calculus can work to graph many many types of functions, in fact most of the functions you're familiar with. However, there are some limitations. Uh, since calculus is based on derivatives, uh, these techniques can only work for functions that are differentiable almost everywhere. That is, they only have a countably infinite number of non-differentiable points. Aside from that, here's the technique. So there are several things to think about, and I just want to list it that way as things to think about. Number one, the y-intercept. There may or may not be a y-intercept. Not every function crosses the y-axis, but if there is, it's usually easy to find, so you might as well find it. Number two, the x-intercept. Again, not every function has x-intercepts, and if it does, they're not always easy to find. If it's not easy to find, ignore it. But if it is easy to find, or if they are easy to find, then you might as well use them, because it's easy information that can make your graph look a little bit better. Next up, we have the domain. And really, some people like to look at the domain even before looking at the intercepts. For instance, if you know zero is not in the domain, there's no point in looking for a y-intercept. Other things we might consider, we might consider looking at critical values or critical numbers. We might use um, the second derivative to find inflection points. We might consider the increasing-decreasing test. The first derivative test. The second derivative test. The concavity test the intervals of increase and decrease, and then in terms of asymptotes, we need to worry both about vertical, horizontal, so there's a lot of things to consider. As you can see, this is a, a rather daunting list, but it's better than what you would have learned in a purely algebraic setting, perhaps in uh, pre-calculus if you took that class. In there, you're going to learn a set of steps that's, again, a fairly daunting list, and they're not all related. These are all very much related to taking the function, setting it to zero, taking the derivative, setting it to zero, taking the second derivative, setting it to zero, and then using limits to find potential asymptotes. Oh, speaking of asymptotes, I suppose we should mention oblique asymptotes as well. Something to consider. So there's all these things to consider. Um, we're not going to use all of these in most graphs. In fact, you will only use a handful of these things in any given graph, typically. And so what I really recommend is as you draw a graph, as soon as you start getting enough information to plot something, start plotting that. And as you plot those things, you start to realize what you need and what you don't need. An example might be a vertical asymptote. If you know that there's a vertical asymptote somewhere and you're not sure if it's approached like this or like that, there's several ways to find out. The second derivative could tell you if it's concave down or concave up. On the other hand, the first derivative could tell you if it's increasing or decreasing. On the other hand, the limit could tell you if it's approaching infinity or approaching negative infinity. On the other hand, if you found the, the x-intercepts and you know there aren't any and you've got another point above the x-axis, then it must be going up. If you've got another point below the x-axis and there's no x-intercept, then you know it must be going down. So there's lots and lots of ways that you could potentially get that same information for your graph. And you only know that if you're looking at your picture and you go, ah, here's what I know. So let's do an example. We're going to try and sketch a graph of h of x equals x ln x. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a look at the domain. Remember, when looking at the domain, there's several things that we need to consider in general. 
one of those things is that the denominator cannot equal zero. We have no denominator, that's not an issue here. One of those things deals with tangent, cotangent, secant, cosecant. They've got their own domain issues. We don't have any of those here. One of them here deals with logs, where the argument has to be greater than zero. One of them has to do with even roots, where the radicand has to be greater than or equal to zero. The radicand, fancy name for the thing under the square root or the thing under the fourth root or the thing under the sixth root. So the only one of these we have here is a log. We know that the argument has to be greater than zero. And in this particular example, x is the argument. So we know x has to be greater than zero. Now that tells us right away that there is no y-intercept because it's not in the domain. So we're not going to bother looking for a y-intercept. Should we look for an x-intercept? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So if we look for an x-intercept, um, we're going to be setting this function equal to 0. 0 equals x ln x. That means we get either x equals 0 or ln x equals 0. x equals 0, not in the domain. ln x equals 0, yeah, that's in the domain. Uh, if I were to exponentiate both sides of the base of e, we would get that x equals e to the 0. That is x equals 1. So we have an x-intercept at 1, 0. All right, the next thing that I'm going to do is take a look at the limit. Since we are approaching um, 0 from the right, we're going to look at the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of x ln x. And as I look at this limit, I can see that we're going to have Let's see, that's 0 times negative infinity that is unfortunately indeterminate. So we need um, L'Hopital's rule. I need a way to write this as L'Hopital's rule. So I need to write this as a quotient. So this will be ln x over x to the negative 1. And now we can take the derivative of both the numerator and the denominator because we now have um, ln of x that's negative infinity. That's infinite as well, so we've got an infinity over infinity situation. And we're looking at the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of the derivative of ln is 1 over x, and the derivative of x to the negative 1 is negative x to the negative 2. All right, so we can simplify this. This is the limit as x approaches 0 from the right, 1 over x over negative 1 over x squared. This is the limit as x approaches 0 from the right, 1 over x times x squared over 1. There's a negative sign. We have the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of negative x. And that limit, of course, is 0. So we know where this is going. In fact, this conforms to what we already saw over here. These are consistent statements. Okay, with that information in mind, uh, as long as we're talking limits, let's go ahead and take a look at the limit as x approaches infinity. This would be to look for a horizontal asymptote. Another way of saying that is end behavior. So we're looking at our end behavior here. The limit is x approaches infinity. Let's see, that's infinity times infinity, and infinity times infinity is infinity. So with that, I'm going to start our graph. We've got enough information to where we can start putting some things on our graph. So one of the things we can put on our graph, actually, you know what? I don't need that big an x-axis because we've already said that the domain is positive. And I'm labeling the scale. It's always important when you draw a graph so people know what you're counting by. We know that the limit, excuse me, we know that there is an x-intercept at 1, 0. 
There it is. We know the limit as x approaches 0 from the right is 0. So there's going to be an open circle there. It's not in the domain, but the limit is there. So what's this doing? So somehow it's got to go through here. And we found out that at the end, it's going to be pointing up somehow. OK, now we got to figure out what else is going on here. Um, one way we can do that, of course, is to take a look at the first derivative. That is to say h prime of x. And since this was a product, we're going to need the product rule for the first derivative. So that's going to be the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. And that is 1 plus ln x. In order to find the critical points, we're going to set this equal to 0. Setting this equal to 0, we get that negative 1 equals ln x. Again, exponentiate both sides with a base of e, and we get that x equals e to the negative first power. That's approximately 0.37, and I'm approximating it just so I can find it on the graph. So this means if we have any turning points, if we have any turning points, this is the only place we can have a turning point. This really tells me a lot about the graph. If this is the only place we can have a turning point, then I've got to have a turning point somewhere around here. And it's got to end up out there. It sounds like this is probably going to go down and up to get up here. It's pretty much has to do that. And so that's really all the information we need. Um, so that means I need to find h of e to the negative 1 to get the exact uh, location of that point. And that's going to be uh, 1 over e times ln of e to the negative 1. That's 1 over e times negative 1. This is negative 1 over e. And negative 1 over e, that's going to be right around here. So we're looking something like that. And again, this is our only possible max or min. So it looks like it's going to be this. <sighs> there could be an inflection point. What if this changed to that? OK, I better check on inflection points. I'm going to find the second derivative in order to check on inflection points. There's no reason really to think that there is one. But on the other hand, there's no th reason to think there isn't. So h double prime of x. Well, let's see. That's going to be the derivative of this. That's just 1 over x. And if we set that equal to 0, we don't get any inflection points. So since there's no inflection points, then this must be a fairly straightforward curve looking something like this. Now, I would always recommend at this point, go ahead and check this out on Desmos or GeoGebra or even Google Graphing. Just something to see that your curve looks right. I've checked this one out already. This looks great. Um, hopefully, this was helpful to you in this process. And again, the process is kind of a think, what do I use? There's several tests I didn't use here. There's lots of things I didn't look up. There's alternatives you could have used that would have made maybe some of my steps redundant. But I think I've hit pretty much about the minimum number of steps to draw this graph. Bye for now.